We're going to talk about gaslighting today and how it makes you feel crazy. Let's just jump in. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, heal from, and transform your life after being in toxic relationships or being raised by toxic people and narcissists in particular. Gaslighting is no joke, you guys. It is probably one of the most confusing manipulation tactics that creates the most sense of need to engage with it from the person on the receiving end. So if you're being gaslit, the urge to respond to it, to correct the weird, twisted reality, to defend yourself, all of that is really strong. And gaslighting is once a person who is gaslighting you has started down the road of gaslighting, the chances of them stopping and going, oh, you're right, I'm telling a lie, or this isn't the reality, you're right, is pretty slim, especially if they're narcissistic or toxic in any way. They're using it, right? It's a tool to avoid the truth, to avoid accountability, to twist realities to get their way, to control you, and to, you know, anything manipulative. It's a very manipulative tactic. It is complete dismissal of a reality twisting it into a new reality. And a lot of times, if a narcissist is caught doing something, say they physically harm you, say they are completely abusive and and like verbally whatever, and get caught, right? And, and someone sees it. Say there's something they can't deny. There's no wiggle room for, for deniability. They will use gaslighting to convince you you're crazy so that they can dismiss the thing that happened and make the thing that happened because of you, something about you. And it could be the strangest thing that they're saying it is your fault for. The thing is, from a distance, you're like, well, why would I believe that if it's not happening to you, right? You're going, well, that's so not true. Look at this person, this foolish person saying this thing that makes no sense and blah, 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 right? But when it's happening to you, See, you've invested in the relationship. You've invested in the discussion or argument. You've invested in being right and having your truth be what's in the forefront. You don't want to be lied about. You don't want the words twisted. And you've invested in it. You are now part of the dynamic with them. That's what they want. They want to hook you in. And they do that in the beginning by either seeming to listen to you, by engaging in an argument that's very attacking, you know, by... Um, basically provoking you. Once they've provoked you to the point of distraction from your center and your groundedness, um, and they've pulled you out of that and they've thrown you into fight flight, right? Because it's tumultuous and it's, it's provoking. So once you're there, then they can often just sit back with calm and ease and twist things around so you get reactive. When you're reactive to the gaslighting, it can turn into all kinds of things. It can turn into shutdown, disassociation, crying, taking the blame. It can turn into reactivity, yelling and screaming, cussing them out, physically going after them, throwing something, things that are out of your nature even. It can turn into reactive abuse, right? Very quickly, very easily, once you've reached your max. And it can get even worse the more you understand about narcissism and the more you understand about manipulation because you're like, yeah, I'm not taking that anymore. And once you have that stance, it's really important to be able to walk away when the gaslighting starts and hopefully get away from the situation altogether. Because once you've like gone past your threshold into reactive abuse, suddenly you are part of the problem. You are engaged in something you wouldn't do, and there is something to apologize for. Well, so say you do something. Say they're screaming and yelling and gaslighting and like, well, I don't know what are you talking about? Well, why'd you do that? You know, you're hurting my feelings. And they do that thing where it's all like and jumbly and like hard to, you know, and they just keep coming at you with a bizarre point that was never part of the regular conversation. So once that happens and you get reactive and you say, enough and you scream in their face, or you throw something, or you walk past them and nudge them with your shoulder, whatever it is that you do, then they make the whole thing about how you're an angry person. 
And then they'll have 25 reasons why your anger is affecting every relationship of your life and how your anger and your, your reactivity, they won't say reactivity, they'll say your un, undue attacks. You're coming at me out of nowhere. You're pushing and pushing and pushing. That's what I used to hear. You're pushing and pushing and pushing. I'm like, what am I pushing? What am I pushing? The truth, right? And so once you get to that point, they flip it. And then the gaslighting, there's a whole nother level. And why is that? Because they can't get caught being responsible for this. It, they need it to be you. Once it's accepted, once you are lost and confused and you're like, I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh my gosh, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. Once you go into, or you shut down or you're confused and you start acting like you feel like you're crazy, right? They have you in the position of ultimate control. They can control everything because see, they're afraid you're going to tell. They're afraid you're going to go out there and let people know what they're doing. So they've got to make totally sure that you're so messed up in your head that you can't even tell the story straight. And you can't tell the story without telling your part now because you've had a reaction. You see how gaslighting is like terrible, terrible to do to people and how the need for gray rock, the need for getting away from this, the need for understanding that this is not healthy communication and that you won't engage in it um, is super important and how we need to figure out a way for ourselves, each person individually, how to not be involved in situations where this is going on, right? Because there is no winning. That has to run its course. At that point, once, once the gaslighting gets that deep and that many layers, it's got to run its course. That narcissist has to feel like they win or you've forgotten. If they feel like you've forgotten, then slowly, slowly, their guard will be dropped just this much so they're not always ready for the pounce to make you feel crazy again. If they think you're going to tell, if they think you're going to leak their information about the truth of them, if they think that you're going to tell them and make them discuss what actually happened, they're going to keep going. And see, this is a problem because people, when they can't leave narcissistic situations and when they can't, you know, get away from these people, low contact, whatever reason, or even full contact, right? When they can't get away, they think you as a survivor might think, well, I need to, I need to reconcile this. We need to reconcile this so we can move forward with the relationship. We need some resolution. We need things to be smoothed out. We need understanding, right? But if you're continually pushing the truth at a narcissist who needs you to accept and align with their lies, which is the gaslighting, you're going to end up in a more escalated, dramatic thing. Or they'll take that, they'll shut down. Sometimes they'll be like a covert narcissist. Sometimes they'll be like, fine, you're right. I accept my part, not a real apology, but you know, they'll do that thing. So you go, oh, they're thinking they're trying and you leave it at that because, oh my gosh, you got that much, right? Well, they'll use this and throw it at you later. They will weaponize it and throw it back at you. They'll say, you are always so reactive. You are always, because if, if you say something to them, like I just get reactive to the, to the way you, you confuse me, the way when we argue, you're always blah, 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 right? I just get reactive. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be reactive. They'll later on say, oh, you're so reactive. Well, that's why we can't have conversations because I try to tell you something and you go straight into a reaction. So, <laughs> right? There's no point. In fact, it's detrimental to try and smooth things over in a healthy way with a narcissist because they will take anything healthy you're trying to throw into that and weaponize it. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. If you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the info in the main description of every video. There's lots of information there on ways to get different forms of help as well as tuning in here. And there's a lot of terrible things they do. But see, they do this when things are needed most, when there is the most vital need for healthy communication in the relationship or friendship or parenting or whatever it is, workplace, it doesn't matter with the dynamic between two people or more or more. They do this when it is the most important that transparency and honesty and availability to the other person is necessary. When there's tension, 
when there's question, when there's room for connection through discussion, right? Like when a normal, healthy relationship would begin to grow, they stunt it right there with the gaslighting. And the narcissistic person, like they just can't have those deep connections or even like surface connections, really, right? Like they get can't get past their own ego and their interpretation that ego is having in order to protect itself from whatever it thinks is going to come after it. Well, we know what's going to come after it. Truth, the other person having an actual life and mattering, you know, uh, this is the thing about it. I've been around a lot of covert narcissists. Okay. And so when you're with covert narcissists or around covert narcissists and they are gaslighting you, it comes at the strangest time over the most benign disagreements and everything turns into a pouting match and a need to dominate. Does that make sense? Like there is a need for them to dominate the energy, for them to dominate the whole thing and twist it into something. Even people who are covert narcissists who are not necessarily the yelling, screaming type, they're more like happy-go-lucky in the rest of their life where people think they're nice guys or whatever. There's this need to dominate and control. And when it doesn't happen instantaneously, even when it does happen, they have to push into it with this gaslighting and make sure that your reality is invalidated.